Family Theater presents Lloyd Nolan, Wayne Morris, and Betty Lynn. From Hollywood, the Mutual Network, in cooperation with Family Theater, presents Wayne Morris and Betty Lynn in Brannigan's Bat. To introduce the drama, your host, Lloyd Nolan. Thank you, Tony Lafrano. Family Theater's only purpose is to bring to everyone's attention a practice that must become an important part of our lives. If we are to win peace for ourselves, peace for our families, and peace for the world. Family Theater urges you to pray. Pray together as a family. Tonight's Family Theater takes great pleasure in presenting Brannigan's Bat, starring Wayne Morris as Eddie and Betty Lynn as Olivia. You know, baseball's a funny game. I've been in and around a ballpark as a player or a manager for quite a while now, and there's still only one thing I know for sure. A good ball player's got to have self-confidence, always. And some of the things the average fan never hears about would, well, maybe I better tell you the story of how I got started, and I guess I ought to begin it back in the Bush League with a girl named Olivia. <laughs> way home. Is it still on? Shh. Eddie's up. Two outs, last of the nine. He swings and misses for strike two. It's three balls and two strikes on batter Eddie Hoople. It's the pitch. He struck him out. Hoople goes down swinging and Peoria loses. Oh, the poor darling. He must be so unhappy. Mm, he isn't the only one, Olivia. Now, let's face the facts. Eddie isn't the smartest fella I've ever met, but you're very fond of him. So fond of him? I love him. I'm going to marry him. All right. The main thing I'm saying is he'll never amount to shucks as a baseball player. He just can't hit worth a darn. Hey, where are you going? Come on out here and give me a hand with this stuff. Now, what on earth are you going to do with the porch furniture? I'm getting it all of the way. Here, grab the other end of this table. But, but what for? Well, Eddie likes to pace back and forth while he's brooding. I'm giving him a clear track. It's easier. Mm. On him or on the furniture? On both. Mm. There, that's better. Would you like me to get my <gasps> toolbox out and disassemble the porch swing? No, I'm going to need that. Now, look here, daughter. Oh, Pop, really. Don't parents ever grow up? <laughs> That's enough for now, Eddie. Hmm? What's that? You've been walking the floor for over an hour. Now, come on over here and put your arm around me. <clears throat> there, that's better. Did anyone say anything to you after the game today? Just Joe Marsh, the catcher. He thinks he's a comic. A big smart aleck. He said, uh, tell me, Hoople, if Biff Brannigan is such a pal of yours, how come he never taught you to bat? Well, you should have given him a good punch in the nose. He says I couldn't hit the floor with a broom unless I'd been over. I'm beginning to think he's right. Eddie, I don't like that kind of talk. I'm sorry. I have faith in you, and so is Biff. He got you your chance here. If it wasn't for that, we might never have met each other. I know. If Biff believes in you, why can't you believe in yourself? Oh, I think it's worrying about Biff that's got me feeling so low. He must be awful sick, Olivia. And I shouldn't be lecturing you at a time like this. Did you get that call through? No. Long distance said the hospital switchboard was swamped. The whole country must be phoning to find out how he is. Oh, Biff will pull through, Eddie. I just can't picture him sick in a hospital. I still remember him like he was when I was a kid hanging around the ballpark back home. Oh, 
Hello, Mr. Brannigan. Can I carry your stuff down to the locker room? Uh, Eddie, how come you're not in school? Well, uh, I had a little argument, Mr. Brannigan. Uh-huh. Who gave you that black eye? Ah, oh, Stinky Davis. You want to see him? Fighting again, huh? I don't like that. Oh, gosh, I just had to hit him. He insulted you. Oh, he did, huh? Well, what'd he say about me? Well, he says you weren't as good as Babe Ruth. And I slugged him. <laughs> well, Eddie, maybe Stinky was right. No, sir. You're the best ball player in the whole darn world. <laughs> okay, okay. I don't want you slugging me, too. But listen to me for a minute, Eddie. Yes, Mr. Brannigan? Uh, my friends call me Biff. I don't want you getting into fights over me. You make up with Stinky, understand? If you say so, Mr. Brant... Biff. All right. Now, come on in. I'll give you a workout. Golly, can I carry your bat, Biff? Sure. Uh, careful, son. That hunk of wood is loaded with base hits. <laughs> He must be a fine man, honey. He's the best there is. What time is it? Just nine o'clock. Why? I want to tune in on the sports summary program. Maybe they'll have a bulletin from the hospital. And so our time tonight will be devoted to a eulogy of a great athlete who died in his prime. Biff Brannigan was a national hero. His untimely death will shock... Oh, Eddie. Oh, How no. How awful. It isn't true. It's... It's got to be a mistake. Eddie... Come back! When Biff went down swinging, I folded up completely. I checked in at the ballpark every day, but I was just going through the motions, and it looked like I was all washed up in baseball. Then one day, while I was sitting on the bench waiting my turn at the plate... Hey, Slugger! Hey, you, Hoople! Yeah. Package just come for you. Thanks. Hey, it's a bat. Ha! <laughs> Someone's kidding you. What would you want with a bat? Look, there's some writing on the card. It says, uh, this was his favorite, and I know he'd want you to have it. Good luck to you always, Betty Brannigan. Well, what do you know? It's... Hey, hey, come on, you're up. I can't. I gotta put this away. Take it with you and get a hit. If you don't, you're through. I've gotta get a hit. Well, if it ain't home run hoople, talking to himself again. Listen, Muttonhead, I'll All take right, part. Abbott and Costello, cut the comedy of play ball. Lop it in here, lefty boy. This chump just come up with some fresh air. Mm. You're right. One. Out of step, lefty. Easy man up here. Right in here now, boy. Right in here now, boy. Mm. You're right, chump. Oh, nothing to it, lefty. I just got to get a hit. Careful, son. That hunk of wood is loaded with base hits. Boy, I'm telling you, from that day on, I got hot, and I just wouldn't cool off. Come early August, I was batting close to 400 and leading the league in homers and runs batted in. Olivia was happy, but kind of puzzled. Warm, isn't it? You know, that's the third time you've said that. What's troubling you, darling? Trouble? Why, you... why, nothing. Everything's fine. Great. Well, that's what I thought. And it's all happened so quickly that it seems like a miracle. Yeah, yeah, a miracle. And by this time next year, you'll be in the big leagues and, and we'll be married. Won't that be wonderful? Yeah, yeah, wonderful. Uh, honey? Yes? I got a call from McKnight this afternoon. Old sad Sam himself. Oh, they want you to come up this season. They want me to come up this week. No. Oh, Eddie! Oh, hey, hey, take it easy. There's something I want to tell you. Oh, come on east for the World Series and we'll be married in New York. World Series? They're eight games out of first place right now. Where do you get the idea that... Never you mind. My man will change all that as soon as he gets there. Now, stop now, dodging oh, me. Wait a minute. i got to tell you that... <laughs> now, what have you got to say for yourself? Okay, baby doll. <laughs> There were only seven weeks left in the season when I got there, and it didn't look as if we were going to go anyplace special. But I hit four out of five my first time in the lineup, and suddenly we all started playing over our heads. The Bears are only three games out of first place. The Bears are tied for first place. The World Series! 
I gotta get out in the field in a minute, honey. You all right here? Oh, just fine, Eddie. If I were any closer, I'd need a first baseman's mitt. Hey, Eddie. Shove off. We gotta get the show on the road. Okay, okay. And just who is that sour-looking old goat? That's Sad Sam McKnight. He's only the manager. With a face like that, I can see why they call him Shh, Sad. Shh, shh, Quiet, here he comes. Oh, Mac, uh, this is Miss Denny. Olivia, this is Mr. McKnight. How do you do? Likewise, lady. Now, Eddie... Okay, you... okay, I'm going, I'm going. Take care of my girl, Mac. Good luck, honey. What do you think of my Eddie, Mr. McKnight? How about calling me Mac, Miss Denning? Well, gladly, if you'll drop the Miss Denning and call me Olivia. Agreed. One thing, though, Mac. Yes? I can't abide a man who doesn't finish his sentences. What's on your mind? Yeah, we're gonna get along fine. Eddie's a lucky boy, Olivia. And you're Irish and full of blarney. Now, out with it. Well, it's a hard thing to put a word to. In the first place, a manager loses a man like Biff Brannigan and gets a boy like Eddie all in one year. Shouldn't be worrying at all. He should be counting his blessings. Which I am, mind you, which I am. But? But there's something funny, something I can't put my finger on. You see, Eddie never relaxes on or off the ball field, and he worries more about that big brown bat of his than the young mother worries over her firstborn. Well? Well, aside from that, everything's fine. Oh, it's fine. I'd be crazy to try to change things around. What is it you want me to do, Mac? Well, nothing for now, Olivia. Maybe nothing at all. Just try to get your boy to relax a bit, that's all. Mainly, I wanted to know that I could depend on you, that you'd help me if I needed help. Of course, any time and any way that I can. Well, thank you. And now, keep your fingers crossed. we well, here we go. Well, I kept right on pounding the ball like a pile driver, and we knocked over the first two games like they were ducks in a shooting gallery. In the third game, I came up to bat in the last half of the ninth with a score tied at three apiece. The pitcher tried to give me an intentional walk, but the third ball was a little too close to the plate. I reached across and... It's a home run! Leave me alone, will you? Will you let me alone? Let me through here. Well, what do you know? He kept right on going. Uh, what was that hunk of wood he was carrying? His bat hit... Eddie broke his bag. The fans all figured we were a cinch to take the fourth game and the series, but they figured wrong. I folded up. The team fell apart and we dropped the next three games. Mac was afraid to shave himself for fear he'd cut his throat. He talked to me by the hour, but I just couldn't tell him what was bothering me. So... Let's walk for a while, if you don't mind the rain. Me, I like it. it. Gives us a day off, just when we need it most. All right, Mac. But I don't know what's the matter with Eddie. I can't get anything out of him. Lately, he's even taken to avoiding me. That's bad, honey. That's bad. You were my last hope. Oh, there must be something, Mac. I'll have one more go at him. Maybe he'll break down and talk. Well, if he'd only do that. This way, it's like fighting shadows. All right. I'll phone you if I find out anything. Phone me one way or the other, will you? Olivia? Yes? Straighten him out. And I'll buy you the biggest wedding present in town. <laughs> have some idea what the trouble is? Why don't you forget about me? I'm just no good, that's all. Look at me, Eddie. Don't you love me anymore? Ah, I guess I'll always love you, Olivia. But you shouldn't let that make any difference. I'm just a faker. That's not true. It is true. You just don't know how much of a phony I really am. Eddie Hoople, the uh, sensational young slugger. Huh. Well, just because you're in a slump... I'll no. slump my eye. I'm through. And what's more, I never was any good. Oh? Well, then suppose you tell me one thing. Who's the fellow who's been knocking all those baseballs over the fence? Biff Brannigan. What? It, it sounded like you said Biff Brannigan. That's right. And now you know. But he's dead. Yes, but I've been using his bat, the one Mrs. Brannigan sent me. Now do you see why I'm such a phony? Do you mean to tell me 
No, I don't believe oh, it. Oh, it's true, all right. I've just been waltzing up there and going through the motions. Biff's been doing the hitting for me. Eddie Hoople, if you're trying to kid me... I tell you, Biff's been hitting him. I tell you, it's been Biff all the time. All right. Biff's been doing everything. You haven't had one thing to do with it. Well, just tell me this. What made him stop? I broke his bat. He had to stop. Eddie, do you believe in ghosts? Of course not. What kind of a sap do you think I am? Eddie... Eddie, darling, lie down. You've been under a strain the past few months. I, I guess I hadn't realized it. Well, now, relax and, and try and get a good night's sleep. I've got to attend to something, but I'll see you in the morning. And that's the whole story, Mrs. Brannigan. You may laugh now if you like, but thanks for inviting me out anyway. Well, you know, somehow I don't feel like laughing at all. Then you'll help me? Well, of course I'll help you. Only, well, perhaps you'd better tell me just what it is you want me to do. Well, I want you to give Eddie another one of Biff's bats just before game time tomorrow afternoon. I was afraid you were going to ask me that. You... you won't do it? My dear, I can't do it. The only other bat of Biff's that I know about is in the baseball museum at Cooperstown. Oh, no! Oh, now, there, 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 don't cry. There must be some way to... Wait a minute... Biff had all his bats made at Pauling's downtown near City Hall. You could go down there first thing tomorrow That's morning. That's right, and maybe they'd... No, be... I forgot. Tomorrow's Sunday. They'd be closed. Oh. Don't chin up, honey. We aren't licked yet. We're, we're not? No. Operator. Operator. What are you doing? Calling up the reserves. We've just begun to fight. <laughs> Did you get the manager? No. His home still doesn't answer. Well, that's what I supposed. I called every other place I could think of. I left messages all over. Oh, you've been wonderful, honey, but I guess it's just no use. What time is it? Oh, I don't know. It was almost midnight when we got down here. Come on. Let's try the door again. Pauling should have a night watchman around somewhere. The rain's letting up. They'll play today. Never mind that. Here, I'll use my ring. And what do you think you're doing oh, there? Oh, you frightened me. Did I now? I'm a bad boy. Oh, it's my fault, officer. She's trying to get a bat for me. Oh. I suppose you need a bat at this hour of the morning because you have to win the World Series. That's right. Wait a minute. What she means is we need the bat so that Eddie Hoople can win the World Series. I might have guessed it. Hoople's been trying to play without a bat, all right. Yes. You see, now, he, look here. she means he's been trying to play with the wrong bat. You know what I think? I think you're both bats, the pair of you. Come along. But officer. I said come along. I want you to meet the judge. The judge? Yeah. He ain't no bat boy, but he is a little peculiar. You'll like him. <laughs> And that's the story, Judge. We should be looking for Mr. Lawrence right now. We haven't got much time. Mm-hmm. And this Mr. Lawrence... He manages Pauling's. He's a friend of Mrs. Brannigan's. I see. Well, and I've heard some weird stories in my day. You won't this... tell the newspapers, Judge. We don't want any publicity. Oh, have no fear, madam. I have no desire to have my name mixed up in this melange of superstitious nonsense. Superstitious nonsense? Now, you just... One moment, dear. Judge... Would you mind emptying all the change out of your pockets? What for? Evidence, Judge. Well, come on, what are you afraid of? Oh, very well. There you are. Uh-huh, I see. Well, may I have them back now? Yes, I suppose so. I think I've wasted sufficient time well, on this case. Where are your keys, now. Judge? Well, they're in my top coat. Here, 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 oh, now, stop that. Uh-huh, what do you call this little furry thing on your keychain? Or it's just a... well... Well, it's only... well... Yes, Judge? Well, it's only a rabbit's foot. <laughs> Not really. Superstitious <laughs> nonsense, Judge. <laughs> Officer, get me the head of the missing persons bureau. We've got to find this man Lawrence tonight. <laughs> You 
know what they're all saying? You're a fake, phony, no good quitter. Are you gonna take that kind of stuff? I, I guess they're right. You better bench me. Oh, so you're gonna sit this one out? <laughs> you are quitting. I'm sorry, Mac, but I just can't help oh, it. But kid, don't you see? Without you, we're whipped before we start. Then we're whipped right now. And I thought you were a big leaguer. I thought you were Biff's boy. I was Biff's boy, all right, but I never was a big leaguer. I'm a faker. I always was, and I always oh, will be. Oh, I don't believe that, son. That's the truth. It can't be. Biff Brangan never picked a faker in his life. Oh, leave me alone, will you, Mac? All right. All right, Eddie. If you're sure that's the way you want it. That's the way I want it. Well, then that's the way it's going to be. From here on. <laughs> Ticket stubs. You can't get into the resort section without I see your stubs. Okay, go ahead. Let me see your stubs here. Oh, hey, hello, Miss Brannigan. Say, I ain't seen you around here since. Yes, I know. Will you let us through, please? Game started. We're in a hurry. Okay, go right on. Hey, hey, wait a minute, lady. Where are you going with that bat? It's for Eddie Hoople. Eddie Hoople? He ain't even playing. That bum is sitting. What do you mean, bum? Why, for two cents, hey, I. Hey, lady, watch out where you're swinging that thing. I didn't mean. Hey, watch it. Wait, lady. Well, I guess I showed him. Very good, dear. I think we can get through now. Mac, look, over here. Where have you been? I've been trying to... Why, Betty, well, how Never you mind all that. What inning is that? What's the score? It's the third inning, two to nothing. We're losing. Well, where's Eddie? In the dugout. Oh, get him over here. Ah, uh, but... You uh... asked me to help you. That's what I'm doing. You heard what the girl said, Mac. Get him over here. Yeah, all right, all right. Take the bat, Betty. Here he comes. I've got it. Good. Eddie, darling, Mrs. Brannigan has something for you, and I... Well, you tell him, Betty. Eddie, this bat is for you. It was Biff's bat. And he always said it was loaded with homers. I know he'd want you to use it to win the series today. Gosh. See, I, I don't know how to... Oh, I could kiss you for this, Mrs. Brannigan. Well, oh, I got one for you too, honey, right after the game. I telephone. Oh, here he is now. Hello, Mr. Lawrence. Good evening, Miss Denny. Congratulations, Mike. Well, thank you, Larry. Eddie, Mr. Lawrence is the general manager of Pauling's. He has something to tell you, and I, I want you to listen to him carefully. Mr. Lawrence? Very well. Eddie, I spent most of last night and a good part of today with Miss Denning and Mrs. Branigan. I was... Oh, well, now, wait a minute. Quiet, Matt. Go think... ahead, Mr. Lawrence. Well, I took one of our stock bats, Eddie, and I altered it into a duplicate of the model used by the late Biff Branigan. Is that about it, Miss Denning? Yes, thank you, Mr. Lawrence. You mean to tell me that... Brannigan never even saw the bat you used today, honey. You won the World Series all by yourself. Mac, did you hear that? <laughs> it was me. I did it. I... Hey, what's the matter with Mac? Sad Sam McKnight is smiling. Look. I think... <laughs> I think Mac's beginning to laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, baseball is a funny game, all right. I came back next year, and for 10 years after that, and I never batted below 320. We got a letter from Mac just the other day. He's raising kumquats and cantaloupes on the biggest farm in Florida. Mac wanted to know if Olivia still has that plaque he sent her hanging over the fireplace. That's the one that the sports writers gave him for being the smartest manager in baseball. Mac had him scratch his name out and put hers in. Mrs. Eddie Hoople. What do you know about that? This is Lloyd Nolan again. You know, whether we want to or not, 
We must all have some way of marking off boundaries between right and wrong. We must all have some code of do's and don'ts. And we find from experience that things run smoothest in our personal lives in an organization or in our home when we live by our do's and avoid the don'ts. Well, that's the way it is. And sooner or later, we all come to realize that we can't play the game, whether it's baseball or family life, without rules. And prayer, our contact with God, is a basic rule for everyone, because none of us can find full meaning and purpose in life if we lose contact with God, if we forget to pray. Yes, prayer can do wonderful things. So if you want a sure way of keeping your family closely together, if you want unity and happiness in your home, keep your family in contact with God by the daily practice of family prayer. For the family that prays together stays together. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. From Hollywood, Family Theater has brought you Wayne Morris and Betty Lynn in Brannigan's Bat with Lloyd Nolan as your host. Others in our cast were Herb Vigran, Michael Hayes, Joel Nessler, Paul Duboff, Bill Barron, Howard McNear, Lynn Whitney, Mary Jane Bocchino, and Jim Nusser. The script was written by Erwin Lieberman with music composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman and was directed for Family Theater by J.F. Mansfield. This series of family theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who felt the need for this type of program, by the mutual network which has responded to this need, and by the hundreds of stars of stage, screen, and radio who have so unselfishly given of their time and talent to appear on our family theater stage. To them and to you, our humble thanks. This is Tony Lafrano expressing the wish of family theater that the blessing of God may be upon you and your home and inviting you to join us next week at this time when Family Theater will present Gene Crane and Gene Lockhart in The Woman's Touch. Join us, won't you? <laughs> Family Theater is broadcast throughout the world and originates in the Hollywood studios of the world's largest network, the Mutual Broadcasting System. Crew.